step aside. The people want to hear from me. They've been screaming RVD since before the first match, uh, through the other matches, during intermission. Now I finally come out and give it to them. I don't think like those other guys. I mean, I'm a non-conformist in every way, which is my, which is why I have my platypus uh, motto with me at all times. Um, he's nature's non-conformist. You may have heard one or two people say that I've kicked them hard once or twice. It's happened. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I hear. Uh, Bubba and I would, every night, we would get into a, uh, a fist fight in the ring every single night because uh, it's, it's, uh, it's potato, receipt, 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 receipt. Cause I can wrestle this style, throw in some extreme moves, drop kick you with a chair, but I can go to Japan and wrestle with the best wrestlers there. That's how you want to be. If you can't do it, you make up for it by bleeding all over the place or by bringing in a tra you know, a, a kitchen sink or whatever. That's how I looked at it back then. People think it was just a free for all wild west and, and, and you had to earn the, the leverage. You know, Paul didn't let everyone from the bottom of the card up just go out and do whatever they wanted and come back to the dressing room when they were done. Mm -hmm. But for me, I never had time cues. Even on pay-per-view matches, I had no idea I was going to have it for almost two years. Right. No idea. I had no idea I would have it for one year. I had no idea I'd have it for six months. What did you think of the FTW world title? I hated it. I hated it. I felt like it was, um, I felt like it was a compensation for Taz's ego. Big open room, you know, like a warehouse kind of room, or that's where we're dressing. Everyone's all, you know, uh, there's tables and chairs, people standing, whatever. Over here is Taz, but you can't really see him because he's got a circle of men around him, Team Taz, wearing orange jackets, and they're standing shoulder to shoulder, making a circle around him. And he's in the middle, hours before the show, before the show. getting hyped up. <sighs> You know, and, and, and so like if Sabu wanted to talk to him about something, you, you, you gotta, you know, like get permission from the outer circle or say, I needed, you know, I need a moment of Taz's time. You know, it was just, he put himself in a position where, how could you not have a, a problem with him? He was just so intense. It wasn't like, it wasn't, if you looked at Sid, he just like, you would shit your pants. He gave it all. He gave it all for the business, and uh, even if he doesn't have as much to give, he's gonna keep giving every little bit. I mean, he, as long as I, I don't, I've never known anybody that loves the business as much as Sabu. Well, something happened, I don't even know what, and New Jack comes back, and he's screaming, good, I hope he do fucking die. I hope he fucking die. And, and he's screaming that, and, I don't, and he's fucking, and he's, and then Paul's chasing, and he's, he's going through, and Paul's chasing after him, trying to get him to go out the back door. I didn't know what was going on, but that was one of the, my first times to form an opinion on New Jack, which wasn't a good one. I never put Tammy over the way all the other boys did, and I really think that more than anything else, that probably has something to do with, uh, with why we didn't get along because she would be her normal self, you know, hey, how's it going, flirty, you know, and stuff, and. I didn't really uh, give too much energy to that. I kind of thought, um, dude, that's weird. You know, your boyfriend's right, right, right here. Like, like right, right here. Like I'm touching your boyfriend. We could entertain offers from WCW or WWF, but we're not doing it. We're ECW. And here he was, he went over and, you know, had a contract for supposedly a couple hundred grand, whatever, you know, he made. We weren't making that kind of money there. And I remember, you know, being like, uh-huh, so he sold out. We really wanted this to work. Mm -hmm. We wanted it more than anything, so we didn't want to go anywhere else. I looked at WWE as a sellout. Like, I didn't want to go there because that was the Disney version of wrestling. You know, when I watched it and I'd see them, like, tap each other in the back with a chair, I was like, oh, my God. There used to be a joke uh, that... that you had to pass a drug test to be in ECW, and of course, you know, if you, uh, <laughs> if you pass the drug test, you don't belong there. One of the Pitbull, Pitbull Anthony was like, here, try this. And I was like, can I take this and wrestle? And he was like, oh, you'll be good to go. Well, that started something for me where, after, you know, shortly after that, it was, you know, everyone's like, here, take this, take this, take this. Like, all right, sure, sure. Hey, what was that? Well, you know. Dr. Death, Steve Williams, you know, so here, take this. I said, okay, drank it with a beer. What was that? And he said, uh, morphine. I'm like, oh, is it okay that uh, I already took uh, two Valium and uh, 
a Vicodin and a, and a Halcyon and beer. Yeah, you're good. I said, okay. When I say the pen is mightier than the sword, nobody has hurt me nearly as bad as the writers. When I look back on my career, you know, oh, his back, oh, he got, he got beat up here. Oh, we got an ambulance him out here. Uh, my injuries have, have been storyline. After the shows, everyone's waiting around to get paid, and that takes till at least one. It's like it's like the money for Paul that Paul has to pay the talent is somehow gaining interest by the second in his pocket, and he just waits and waits and waits, and eventually the boys start dying off. You know, they say, <laughs> I can't wait any longer. Fuck it, and they leave, and he wants that. He gave us the same song and dance that he gave that was like, uh, fuck WWE, uh, Vince hates us, we're in his backyard, that he wishes that we would, you know, just disappear. And then I find out later on, you know, he's already got a piece of us. It's the apex, it's the peak. I mean, it's the, it's the very uh, biggest time in ECW's history. And at the same time, it is the beginning of the end. We have a, uh, a network that's gonna put us on and it's gonna change our lives. You're gonna see our faces on the sides of buses. There's gonna be billboards in the cities. People are gonna be tuned in. They're gonna be, uh, they're gonna be showing ECW commercials during other channels and stuff. None of it ever happened. Rob Van Dam.